Thank you for tuning in. I am Isander. And I'm Coda. And today we're going to be covering the Necrons and AI. And AI. Yeah, we're going to be covering It's a, kind of a double feature today. It's a double feature. Yeah. So kind of on the same vein. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're related, mm-hmm. tangentially. Yeah. Tangentially. So let's get into it. We're going to start in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right. We're not starting in the middle this no, time? No, no. I considered it for continuity's sake, but... Um, Damn it. I one. wanted to start in the middle. The middle would be a power nap if we started there. The middle is such a great place No, no, to for start. the Necrons, if we were to start in the middle for their story, uh-huh. it'd literally be smash cut, they're asleep. Oh. That's the middle of the Necron story. Oh. And we'll get to that. Oh. But for now, let's start in the beginning. Okay. Right? Um, in the beginning, there, there was, was the cube. We not know quite. Not where no home. more pyramids, but it's not even that yet. And well, we're going to start like metagame, like uh-huh. in real life. Mm-hmm. They were kind of knockoff Terminators. They didn't have very compelling stories, mm. right? But they did have some cool stuff to them, like pariahs and stuff, which we'll get to later. Pariahs? It's basically like what happens with Necron tech and like flesh. It's mm. never pretty. But they're mm. really cool. They made for some compelling stories, right? Fun. But um, they got ret- retconned. They got <laughs> really hard. Retconned really hard. Oh, they got like one of the hardest retcons mm. of anything, right? But now, they're some of the most human TI-82s in the galaxy. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, actually. Um, That's because where their plot starts today... Isn't that a calculator? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a calculator. It's a calculator? Mm -hmm. The Texas Instrument 82. A human calculator? Basically. Are they Um, mentats? Before before they were calculators, right? Uh, They used to be grass-fed organic meat like the rest of us. They used to... Huh? Yeah, they used to be grass-fed organic meat like the rest of us. Oh. Yeah, they used to have bodies. They used to be, like, the Necron tier, Mm -hmm. right? And, um... I don't know. Your diet is grass? Yeah. Your grass-fed organic meat? Yeah. Oh. We graze in this household. <laughs> you know that's horrible for your teeth, right? Well, the back teeth are made for it. Anyway, right, um, they were people, kind of like us, but mm-hmm. instead of living on, like, a nice blue marble like us, mm-hmm. um, their planet's atmosphere didn't work right, and their sun wasn't as nice as ours is. Oh, so they they live on Mercury. Basically. It's, it, it's Mercury Chernobyl. It sucked. So it Mercury. Sucked. Um, they're, it, they they lived very, very short lives, and they mm-hmm. were always riddled with very, very painful cancers. Like, across mm. the board, right? Um, their lifespan their lifespan was so short that mm-hmm. most of their towns, right? Like, most of their, their settlements mm-hmm. were dwarfed by the massive tombs they had to build to bury <laughs> the dead. They were literally living in the shadow of their dead. That is... Yeah. That is... That? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Like, their the, their burial grounds were, like, three times larger than their living rooms. <laughs> yeah, so so th- this allowed them to have, like, a weird fascination with death, because they're like, mm-hmm. well, it's going to happen anyway, and it's going to happen in, like, mm, two seconds. What's it like having such a short life cycle? It's great, mister. When I grow up, I'm going to... Wish I had done more with my life, sonny. Get your <sighs> They had a very grim outlook on things, right? Mm-hmm. But they did have one bit of hope, kind of, which was like their collective goal to reach immortality. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, we're going to die in five minutes. Let's try and make it forever. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So they oh, they tried really hard, which science is difficult because the way intelligence works is it compounds over a lifespan. Yeah. Right? There are some really smart creatures out there that die way, like they have such short lifespans, they can't take advantage of it, mm-hmm. right? So Necrons were about as smart as we were but they lived for like a quarter of the time, if not less. Mm-hmm. So any advancement they wanted to make took way longer. Because mm-hmm. basically like, oh, I'm 20. I'm at my death's door. <laughs> I hope I figured out this whole space travel thing by now. How if smart- not, I got to teach my kid who I had at like 10. <laughs> right? You're literally playing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's a life, of, life or death game of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. It took way longer than most other races, but this was way, way, way before most of the races were even around. They're like one mm-hmm. of the first races. Oh, so, they're like ancient. Oh, they're fossils. They're mm. fossils. But they did eventually mm-hmm. crack space travel, and not in a very pretty way. Like, it wasn't like, oh, fun and faster than life travel. It was a freeze the box and shoot it up slowly, and they'll get there eventually. Huh. <laughs> yeah, so it, was like, it wasn't like, oh, we're traveling faster than light. It's more, we've been asleep forever. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, they did eventually like get out into like the wider like, space of 40K. And again, it, just, it took them ages. And again, they're really old. So this was before it was like awful. It wasn't great, but it wasn't mm. awful. It was right? just chaos unknown. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't a, 
the entire M- or galaxy is ablaze. Yeah, exactly. It's like the opening uh, couple years of a Stellaris game rather than, you know, getting to the mid-game, mid-game challenge and, oh, the great cons have taken over. Exactly. So they, they were floating about. And their theory originally was, well, we've left the radiated planet. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't die as quickly. They were still dying as quickly. <laughs> They're still dying as quickly. This one isn't really explained. The best guess we have is it's just like... They're just like they're, their they're, DNA is their so DNA screwed. is just so prone to making errors when copying itself. Mm-hmm. You're just gonna get cancer. Well, because anyway. it's been so irradiated yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like it's like their genome's irreparably damaged. Basically, yeah. is the current theory, right? Mm-hmm. So they were big boy molding over that because I was there. That was their hope for a bit there. They're like, we're off. We made it. We we can survive past twenty. No, still no. <laughs> But thankfully, they bumped into these guys called the Old Ones, right? Mm -hmm. Who were kind of like Lovecraftian beings of like unimaginable power. I like them already. It's the easiest way to explain them. You don't need to explain anymore. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd prefer you didn't because that's how cosmic horror works. And you're going to be very happy. Not much more is explained. Yay! I love when cosmic horror... I really hate... So, for those who don't know, I'm a massive fan of Mass Effect 3. Or Mass Effect the series. Mm -hmm. I like Mass Effect 3, and okay. that's my hot take for the day, okay. but the part I hate about it okay. is not the ending. Okay. It's the Leviathan DLC, because the big bad, the big bad of this series, the big weird cuttlefish-looking monsters, robot monsters, right? Okay. The Reapers. Up until Mass Effect 3 Leviathan DLC, they're not explained. They're just, they want to kill everything. Why? I don't know. I don't know. And that's the horror of it. The horror of cosmic horror is the, I don't know. The unknowability uh, of it. And the fact that so many cosmic horror things in, in media nowadays resort to, in the end, explaining it. It's... It robs it of the... It the robs mystery. it of its power. Like Halo. Yeah. They've got the flood. The reason they're scary is they're hyper-intelligent. You don't know where the hell they came from. Mm-hmm. And now they're explaining it in these latest games. No, oh, Jesus. It's like, stop. Well, Please, everyone, the, the stop fe- explaining your cosmic horror. Nothing's ever going to beat the fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Like, ever. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter how scary your thing is. The less I know about it, the scarier I'll think it is. Right? Yeah. Um, which, I, I mean, I honestly fully agree on that. Thankfully, these guys stay mostly unexplained. Thank God. <laughs> um, which is kind of impressive because, oh, God... Games Workshop has a tendency to over-explain things. As most sci-fi I know, like developers for, like, or, or, or uh, um, lore masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, like for example, for a long time there, the like Vulcan mm-hmm. would just keep coming back from unlivable situations because he was Vulcan. Mm-hmm. And we didn't need an explanation on that. He's, he's Vulcan. Just, he's he just, just does that. You could tell me he'd survive that and be like, he's just that guy. He's just that Moving guy. Moving on. It adds to his mystery because mm-hmm. now we all get to think of ways he got away with it. Mm-hmm. No, he's a perpetual now and just regenerates from everything. Okay, so like, instead of instead it of cheapens instead him. of instead of making him a cool just like how to get out of it, I don't know. He just did. Mm-hmm. That's cool, right? Mm-hmm. They turn him into Doctor Who, basically. And okay. I'm like, oh, it robs him of so much, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Instead of making him regenerate like mm-hmm. a Time Lord or Deadpool, mm-hmm. just make him a cool dude. He's just that guy. How do you get away with it? He's Vulcan. He's right? Vulcan. He just did it. But uh, these guys stay unexplained, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Necrons meet them, and they're, or the Necron tier at this point, mm-hmm. right? And they immediately, like, fall to their knees and, like, oh, you're obviously divine. Please, please, please give us immortality. Please, please, please give us immortality. Please, please, please. please, 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 we, please. We've tried so hard. Please. Please. please, please, please. I need this. I need I this. I need this. And um, the old ones looked them up and down and said, nah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but they did offer some help, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and while, you know, the help was appreciated, mm-hmm. we're still dying of painful cancer over here. Right? Fun. So this kind of led to, like, a generational resentment, which, again, sounds like it takes a while. They don't live very long. <laughs> <laughs> you could have beef with somebody's great-grandfather in a human lifespan, probably. Mm-hmm. So, But, yeah, this, this kind of, like, age-long, like, they just felt like they're cheated. Mm-hmm. Like, we did this. We worked so hard. We did so this. Hard. We worked so hard. And then they just won't give it to us, right? And, um, like... This, like, with everything fueled with hate, right? Mm -hmm. Things get unstable quickly. Yeah. Like, because they're like, they're mad at their then gods, right? Mm -hmm. Say that in quotation mark, right? Mm -hmm. But they can't really challenge them. Because they turn inwards. Yeah. And so, like, start civil wars start, like, breaking up and Mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. That's when the current Silent King, which is kind of like a title and not a character, but Mm -hmm. there's only so many we know about. So I'm just going to say the current one and then, like, the one in 40 kicks. Mm -hmm. 
those are the most pertinent ones, mm. right? So the current Silent King is kind of like their big boy head honcho. Yeah. Think of it like um, they don't have a democracy. It's more like the common man. And mm. then like there are dynasties that rule over them. They're feudal. And Yeah, they're feudal. And then on top of those dynasties, there's like the one big mustache twirling honcho. Right? They're feudal. They're feudal. They're literally feudal. Mm-hmm. But uh, so the Silent King then in charge is like, wait, 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 guys, 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 stop it, stop it. Let's, let's try our best. Let's we figure this out. We got this. We can take those well, old ones so down. We were so close last time. Mm-hmm. Let's just figure it out. Yeah. So he, he steps in and not wanting his people to eat themselves alive. He was like, let's wage war on them. Mm-hmm. We're going to kill ourselves anyway. We may as well throw ourselves at them, right? Mm-hmm. And like they all rally and they're like, yes, we can do this. And um, uh, long story short, it didn't wonder They get potty, don't they? Um, it was like, you know that one like question that always pops up of what would win the sun versus a billion lions? It was it was that kind of situation. Yeah. There's a lot of Necron tier. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Necron tier. But that's still like almost a force of nature they're going up against. Yeah. It was completely unwinnable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's when this totally trustworthy fellow called the Deceiver the steps in. Deceiver. Now, what a classic nickname for everything fantasy sci-fi. Mm, that's not like the name he appeared to them with, but that was the title he had in like his. I own. mean, if somebody appeared to me and said, "Hi, I'm the Deceiver," mm-hmm. I think I would probably not trust them about anything. So showing up and saying, "Hi, hey, I'm the Deceiver," it wouldn't have gone well. Wouldn't have gone well. And he's from a race called the Catan, like settlers of Catan, mm-hmm. right? Um, they're like gods with frowny faces on them right like they're just they're like the the bad alternative to the old ones right um i mean that's the easiest way to explain them right gods with frowny faces well but they they work kind of it's like the yin to actually that's not very fair the the better analogy is the yin to the old ones yang right Mm. because the old ones are like really warp centered for those of you that don't know the warp is like basically imagine our universe and then a layer Another universe, like, folded underneath it. It's a parallel right? dimension. Yeah, 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 and that dimension allows for magic, travel, mm-hmm. like, it allows for a lot of fun stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the old ones can manipulate this other universe called the warp, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. The old ones are very fond of the warp. They can manipulate it all the live long day. They can hide in there, yada, yada, and yada, right? Mm-hmm. The Catan are the opposite. They're, like, fans of the Materium, mm-hmm. right? So, like, a lot of people think, like, there were two universes forced together, and the mm-hmm. Catans are the gods of, like, the physical one. The old ones are the, girl, the gods of the warp one. Right? Yeah. But... Um, at this time, the Catan are like super focused on the physical, which means they actually don't have like an imprint in the warp. It's kind of weird, mm. right? Which they're is, just exclusively like, in the material they, they world. They live here and now, mm-hmm. right? Which is again, it's very odd because pretty much everything has like an impact on the warp, mm-hmm. right? Um, but they don't, right? And they kind of yeah. hate it a lot. They hate the warp a lot? Yeah, because it's like, it's a natural to them. I mean, if I was a god of just the material world I, and then something over there if is If I was a material like, girl. There's something... <laughs> material girl in the material world and i am a material, material girl, girl. Na, yeah na, 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 na. yeah so, anyway yeah if i if somebody told me hey there's like this invisible like weird going on over there i'd go no that doesn't exist there's only the material yeah. i trust me i'm the god of the material so they're very strong but the warp tends to be stronger so they couldn't really beat the old ones mm-hmm. right? but they, they walked up to the necron tier and were like hey we've been trying to beat these guys before and they thrashed us too mm-hmm. how about we work together eh? team up team up yeah. team we up. could have like a super super villain te- team up right mm-hmm. well he didn't say villain at the time right mm-hmm. and the necron kind of had to discuss this right mm-hmm. like an open forum right as an aside um, quick side tangent all the Catan have cool names yeah like there's the Deceiver the Nightbringer the Void Dragon right the Void Dragon and to give you a sense of scale of how powerful these guys are right you have me intrigued with the Void Dragon um, the Adeptus Mechanicus yes. worship like a machine spirit right the Omnisaya yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, I, and, I, I love this. I know but just in case you don't know basically mm-hmm. what they believe is instead of like opening up a car and like checking its timing belt or anything if it doesn't work they will like sprinkle holy water on it and go and like 2005 Civic will start and it's the most infuriating thing because it does work but it should right like they'll pray over guns and it will help them right like I've said before when Premiere Pro is giving me like an awful time I will pray to the Omnisaya and suddenly video exports mm-hmm. now a lot of people think the omnisaya is um like the emperor he's he's a machine spirit mm-hmm. but there's a sizable theory that like the void dragon is the omnisaya mm. like because because uh, wait you're telling me you're mm-hmm. telling me that the thing i already like mm-hmm. the one warhammer concept that i actually looked into before you started telling me about stuff mm-hmm. is also a void dragon 
Maybe it's not very, I got a lot of because Warhammer, you just made the thing that I like mm-hmm. a lot cooler. A lot of Warhammer isn't set in stone, which is fun. That that like unknowability of it is what's cosmic horror. There's a lot of different avenues, but like there's there's good arguments that it is the Emperor. Mm-hmm. Those are good arguments that there's oh, it's the Void Dragon because mm-hmm. it mentions when the Emperor went to Mars, he fought a, like a like a like a a dragon of some kind that mm-hmm. really fits the description mm-hmm. and sealed it in Mars. And the Void Dragon is one of the few who's unaccounted for today. Mm. So it does make sense that, hold on. Well, Where is he? Man, is he in Mars? Is he in Mars? And, he? and the Catan are powerful enough to do that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's all to give you a sense of scale for how strong they are. And the old ones still like... Mm. Right? So the old mm-hmm. ones are quite something. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah. So the Catan come with this deal. Mm-hmm. Right? Specifically the Deceiver does to the Necrons. And the Necron like, everybody, let's have a discussion. Mm-hmm. And pretty much everyone else who's been beaten into the ground is like, yes, let's yeah, do let's that. Yeah, let's do it. Do Any that. chance. And the, ca- the current Silent King's like really debating it. There mm-hmm. was only one person who dissents against this. Mm-hmm. And his name is Orokin. He's, God, he's so cool. God, he's so much fun. Orokin? Orokin. O-O-R-I-K-A-N. Okay. Orokin, right? Who can see the future. Mm. Right? Oh, so he, he knows that doom is coming no because the way warhammer works is if you can see the future you don't see the future you see the futures oh 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 so he had the um no because conrad kurz only saw the worst he see conrad sees the worst sanguinis tends to see the best Mm -hmm. he just sees one of the futures Mm, he sees them all laid out before him not all he sees one of them like you gotta understand if you see the future in warhammer it's not set in stone you see something that could happen that's so complex it's really not. It's super, like, for example, like, if you were to see the future of this podcast, right, mm-hmm. he could see, like, oh, this thing's just going to become massive, mm-hmm. right? Like, just an unstoppable force. Just 15 billion Joe subscribers. Joe Rogan who, right? I know there aren't 15 billion people on the planet, but somehow 15 billion subscribers. Exactly, which is exactly what's going to happen. Like, comment and subscribe. <laughs> but um, it's just a way it could go, mm-hmm. right? Um, and he said, he walked up and he said, hey, guys, if we do this... This is going to make us the strongest we have ever been. Mm -hmm. We will de facto be the strongest force in the universe, but we will be irreparably cursed for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. And everyone only heard the first part of that sentence. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And um, You said infinite power? mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Unlimited power? Yeah, basically. And so everyone agreed. You didn't catch that reference, did you? I did catch it. It's just overplayed. It's a prequel meme. Um, Shut up. And so everyone agreed, right? And it's super easy to say the, the current Silent King was a jack-off. Mm-hmm. But you got to remember, Necrons don't live very long, right? Mm-hmm. It's very possible. He didn't start this war. He just walked into it. He just it. walked into it and said, ah, right? crap. And he's like, how can I win? Well, mm, right? Mm-hmm. So this this Silent King, right, the current one, he's not the one who started the war. He's just the, the one who he's inherited just, it, yeah. probably, right? He's not, he's, not, he's not the stepfather. He's the father that stepped up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he inherited a very losing war and so his gamble of like oh maybe we'll be cursed it was worth it to him and he took mm-hmm. it right mm-hmm. um but unfortunately orkin was right mm. uh, the moment they agreed with the the, the deal with the Catan, they mm-hmm. created these massive machines for biotransference and like the moment you stepped through it mm-hmm. um your soul was ripped out as was all your meat and you were eaten oh lovely and like out popped out a, a soulless machine oh lovely and like the way it's described is that, because everything, like I said, has a, like an imprint on the warp and it's kind of like your soul. Mm-hmm. It immediately went away. Oh. Like there's just no, Necrons don't leave an imprint in the vault. They know? have no soul. Chaos can't corrupt them. They have no soul. They have no soul. They have no soul. And again, it leaves them with this very, very empty feeling. Mm. Right? Like 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 this, like, like just I'm net missing something. Just the world. I'm not Nothing right. Nothing matters anymore. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and... The first people to go through that and realize what was going on were like, mm, this mm, isn't great. This but but um, once they stepped through, they were kind of soulless automatons for the Catan. Mm-hmm. So they just grabbed all the other Necrons and chains and dragged them through, mm-hmm. whether they liked it or not. Even poor Orokin, who was like, oh, god damn it. I didn't want right? this. I didn't want this. I told you all, don't do this. Yeah, and now you got to remember, like it's not only just a raw deal on the fact that you now have given up your immortal soul, mm-hmm. right? Um, the way it works is these are physical bodies they've constructed, Right, mm-hmm. the katana constructed and put your mind into. Right, mm-hmm. that takes resources. The katana are powerful, but not very, like mm-hmm. not infinitely so. Right. Yeah. So, like for your average civilian, they basically got like a clapped out Honda Civic, mm-hmm. right, um, of a body yeah. with their mind just stuck in there, and mm-hmm. they can't 
rebel against it. They just do as they're told the basic program. Yeah, because right? they have no soul to resist it. E- exactly. Well, no, it's it's a, it's a mind thing, mm. right? Um, the higher ups, like the the higher people in the dynasties, got better, cooler bodies, right? Mm-hmm. They're capable more. And the Silent King got like a big boy body. Yeah, like like he got a forty eighty ti. <laughs> like he he's, he's doing great. Forty eighty ti. Yeah, no, he's doing great. You know when they when they release the fifty eighty ti, mm-hmm. that joke is gonna age like milk. That's the point. <laughs> But yeah, no, he's doing stellar right now. He's, he's got like one of those, like, you know, those deep learning GPUs they use that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the get, silent king is yeah. equipped with an yeah, NVIDIA I, Quadra. And meanwhile, everyone else is like running on basically what Deep Blue is running on, which is impressive. But it's just Deep Blue. It's just, you're very good at one thing. Like, they're mm-hmm. very good at that thing mm-hmm. and they're ordered to do it, right? But the silent king got like a dope body. The silent king got mid journey. The civilians got deep blue. Basically, mm. right? And so, and so after all that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even though the Silent King got like a baller body, it looked like he couldn't resist them either. Mm-hmm. So off they were commanded to like wage war across the universe, right? Fun. Um, and they were forced basically, like they wanted to kill the Catan, but first they were forced to go on these things called Red Harvests. Red Harvests? Well, because the Catan eats souls and bodies. Yeah. And now they have an really large army of very strong robots mm-hmm. so they just go they they were an extinction level event for a lot of previous this races. is avengers level threat basically like the, <laughs> there's a reason a lot of the races that were around don't remember the necrons and mm. that's because if you're around to remember them you're probably not around anymore ah right fun like the this it, it was bad the necrons there's a ton of them already now mm-hmm. they're like properly armed and like made of like regenerating metal yeah and like it's a it's an army that's all in sync with a single mind, basically. Mm. So it's like it's so difficult to beat, mm-hmm. right? So eventually, when they did turn their attention to the old ones, the old ones are kind of on the back foot suddenly. Yeah, and 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 again, it's. It's not to say the old ones are weak. You just got to understand, at this point, the Katana like hucking black holes and stuff. Mm-hmm. It went from like 10 billion lions versus the sun to like 10 billion lions with a black hole. Yeah. And it's like, oh. oh how so do we deal with suddenly this? Suddenly, the sun isn't as strong as it used to be. Yeah. Right? And in desperation, they started just creating races to try and defend them, right? Oh. They, they started with the Eldar, mm-hmm. right? Um, who are basically like just the biggest psychers. Yeah. Just almost complete master. Well, from what I've seen, they're just like... They're, they're space elves. They're space elves, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, elf magic. D- yeah. J- b- 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 yeah. Brain stuff. And and these these were, these were Eldar, like, prime, basically. So yeah. they were like big boy psychers. We haven't mm-hmm. covered them yet, but we will. So you don't have a sense of scale for them. But they did create... The orcs like progenitor, which mm-hmm. is like the crocs. The crocs. And we have covered them. Yeah. And to give you a sense of scale, they were bigger than modern day orcs. They were faster. Mm-hmm. They were stronger. They were smarter. Yeah. And um, there's there's one like in stasis somewhere. Yeah. And like when an, uh, a member of the Imperium saw it, he remarked that it was wearing armor more advanced than what space marines are wearing. Oh, fun. So like. Yeah. The crocs the- were also up, down, strange, charming, tops and bottoms. What? This joke again. What joke? I've done this joke twice now. You've not understood it either time. I never will. Quarks. Oh, God. So, anyway, right? <laughs> um, God, that murdered my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, the quark, yes. quarks joke that, that gives ruined you again? A, that's, again, that's twice now. That gives a sense of scale for how strong the, the Necrons were. Because they yeah. created these two very powerful races that mm-hmm. in today's 40K would be the dominant force. Yeah. And the Necrons were still winning. They were just like sweeping. Yes. They went from being swept mm-hmm. to sweeping. They, in the end, they did win the war against the old ones. Mm-hmm. But like at this point, it wasn't easy, right? Like the the they put up a solid fight, and mm-hmm. both and both the Necron and the Catan were were weaker, right? This, yeah. this fight had drained them. It wasn't an easy fight. Mm-hmm. Right? This is a war of attrition. They'd lost a lot of resources doing it. It wasn't a war of attrition. The Necrons were like again extinction level event. It's mm-hmm. just like they were pulling stuff out of their butts, basically. Like, ah, corks, ah, Eldar, right? Yeah, that's war, what a war of attrition is. In the end, they won the war with the last of the old ones, but it wasn't easy. They put up a solid fight hurting both the Catan mm. and the Necrons, right? But you know what is easy? Hmm. Signing up for the Patreon. <laughs> that's right. You boys have a Patreon. And uh, by signing up, you get access to an extra episode every week. Mm-hmm. You join in on the fun in Discord. You have priority on all fan-submitted content and a ton of of other features Mm -hmm. all while helping us continue to produce this show full time and chase the dream right all that can be found at patreon.com forward slash isander and coda and as for our audio listeners please you know subscribe to the podcast you can enable auto downloads it really 
helps us a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, leave leave a review. Uh, obviously, five stars is prefer five stars is preferable. Mm-hmm. But whatever it is, say it with your chest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, lastly, for our amazing YouTube gang, hit the subscribe button. I know a lot of you already have, mm-hmm. but like, please hit that like and comment because. I'll be honest, machines kind of don't favor long-form content like this. No, they don't. A lot of it's just quick hit, quick hit, quick hit, quick hit, quick hit. Let's shatter your attention span, mm-hmm. right? So if you want to see more long-form content content like this, the only way it knows is if you like it. Yeah. Like, we know you guys want the long-form content, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, the uh, the Omnisaya does not. Yeah. So please, please, please do all of the above, and now let's get back to it, mm-hmm. right? Um, like I said... The Catan were winded and recovering, but so were the Necrons, right? Mm-hmm. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, the Silent King turned on them. Well, oh. see, he wasn't a soulless automaton like they figured. Hmm. They gave him a body that was fully capable of. Oh God, I have something in my eye. Nice. Hold on, this is gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I also have something in my eyes. Yeah, it's called contacts because you can't see. Shut up. But I can. Ugh. Anyway. So while the Catan and winded, were winded and recovering, mm-hmm. um, the Silent King led the Necrons to turn against them suddenly, and they were not prepared for this. Yeah, right? they were like, what? Yeah, yeah and it, it, we're not sure how, but he kept most of his sentience, probably because he had such a like solid bod. Yeah. Again, right? Yeah, so, a rockin' bod. I know. So he was able to turn on the Catan, and again, because they're winded, but the Necrons are also very, 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 very strong, they mm-hmm. were able to beat them, actually, yeah. and shatter them. Mm-hmm. So most of the Catan are like shattered in these shards that they like keep in their tombs as like batteries mm. or like weapons of mass destruction, right? Mm-hmm. And they're molding about it because they're still alive, by the way. They're just in shards. Yeah, they're just like... Mm-hmm. They're like mm-hmm. broken up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the Necrons did win that war as well, mm-hmm. right? But at this point, they were winded. Yeah. They were winded, and the Eldari were just hitting their stride, right? Mm-hmm. So the Silent King, seeing this, was like, if we continue to exist in this universe... We're going we, to die. We will be rendered extinct, right? Mm-hmm. So he ordered everyone to go to sleep, right? Go beddy by bow. It is nap time. It's nap time, right? It is nap time. And his he last... made like a preschool teacher and said, all right, you've gotten your, you've gotten your goldfish cracker snack. It's time to, it's time to go nappy nap. Exactly. And um, 15 minutes... More like 60 million years. Oh. <laughs> and um, his last order to them was, when you wake up, just rebuild the Necron Empire. He yeah. basically like relinquished master control over them. Mm-hmm. And um, all of them followed those last two commands of go to sleep, and then when I wake up, restore the Necrons, mm-hmm. right? And um, he didn't, though. He like went away and spent the last 60 million years in penance mm. for what he'd done. Because ultimately, he inherited the war, mm-hmm. but he didn't. It's still his fault that his people no longer have a soul. Yeah, and he feels bad about that. Oh, yeah. So he's been out and about for the last 60 million years just being depressed, basically. Yeah. Being big boy depressed and, like, just waiting for, like, a reason to wake them up or whenever his race eventually wakes up, Mm -hmm. right? And um, eventually, just out and about in the galaxy, he saw something approaching. Mm -hmm. It was the Tyranids. Oh. This is, like, 60 million years later in modern 40K. Right. Oh. And that freaked him out right enough for him to run back and start waking up two worlds. <laughs> like he turned back around and was like, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. It's time. It's time. It's mm-hmm. time. Time, time, time. Yeah. And so we cut to the modern day, right? Mm-hmm. And he's woken up a few two worlds and some dynasties have already like fully woken up and now they're waking up two worlds. Right. Mm-hmm. But um the universe hadn't forgotten they existed like they hoped. Mm. Right? Like like his hope was like, oh, we'll come back when everyone's forgotten and we'll like sneak up, right? Yeah. But this is kind of like an early wake up call because of the Tyranids, mm-hmm. right? Like Quiet Coyote ran back screaming, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he quickly discovered when he got back that going to sleep's the easy bit. Like mm-hmm. just in like just like in real life, covering myself, hitting the nappy poos, easy. I'm so sorry, I had the opposite problem. No, 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 no. Going to bed is the easy, really. You have- Oh, going to bed's easy. But Actually, no, I have both problems. Jesus. I have a hard time going to sleep, and then I have a hard time waking up. Okay. But anyway, he, he quickly discovered, right, that um, just like in real life, mm-hmm. going to bed is the easy bit. Waking up's the hard bit, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it's harder. Like, for me, it's just, oh, God, I don't want to leave bed, right? For mm-hmm. them, it's a whole process. Because mm-hmm. to wake up a tumor world generates an enormous, amount of po- an enormous amount of power. Yes. Right? As it slowly wakes up its residents, right? Um 
which as an aside like i mentioned not every necron has a personality per se mm-hmm. right like i mentioned they didn't all get great bodies some got like clapped out geometros yeah. some got porsches for bodies right usually the 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 higher up the chain of command was you got a decent enough body so like the nobility have personality yeah but the your worker doesn't mm-hmm. right and as another aside, your average Necron wasn't a warrior. It was a civilian who was dragged in chains. Yeah. So he's just trapped in here, right? As mm-hmm. a drone, effectively defending this. Mm-hmm. Like, Tomb World as it wakes up. Then it slowly goes up, 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 up until it gets to the main guy, the head of the dynasty. Mm-hmm. And when he wakes up, all power and command is switched over to him. Yeah. Right? But there's a con to all this, as you've already noticed. Number one, waking up drones first is... It leaves you open. Yeah. It leaves you very open. Yeah. Right? And then number two, this takes a while, and all that power is a massive beacon mm-hmm. into modern 40K space. Yeah. There's a lot you don't want noticing you. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, not a lot of races really recognize the Necrons for the threat they are. Mm-hmm. So a lot will either outright ignore it because in the middle of something else mm-hmm. or they'll just like come check it out of curiosity. Like, oh, I wonder what that power source is, mm-hmm. right? Except for the Eldar who actually very much so remember mm-hmm. and will like detour whatever they're doing to go stamp it out. It's like, we need to take care mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, because they, they, they saw it. Mm-hmm. They watched it kill their gods, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then on top of all that, if, if somehow they mm-hmm. manage to survive the slow wake-up process, um, leaving a computer off for that long can leave it a bit janky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Usually leaving it on for that long leaves it janky. 60 million years. Yeah. That's the equivalent of turning off a Turing machine and then waking it up. Yeah. Okay, you're using a bad example here because the Turing machine is like the perfect computer. Oh, fuck off. It's like bearing an iPad and... Opening it up with the heat death of the universe. I no, don't no, 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 no. It's like digging your old iPhone 7 out of your, your desk drawer and trying to install modern updates onto yeah. it. Yeah, either way, it's going to leave them a little bit janky. And this has been 60 million years. The universe didn't stop in that time. Yeah. Stars died, mm-hmm. getting rid of the tomb worlds that were orbiting them, mm-hmm. right? The Eldar kept searching for them, so they did find a few. Yeah. New species evolved and, like, eventually like, just cracked them, right? Tectonic plates crushed some of them. Mm-hmm. Like, the universe didn't stop. A lot it of tomb worlds were just lost to time mm-hmm. passing, mm-hmm. right? All this means that there are not many tomb worlds left safe and viable. Yes. Right? Safe and sound. Exactly. <laughs> I love that song. So do you think they do you think they were they were jamming to that while they were sleeping? They had their earbuds in while they were taking the nap and and, and wherever they went to sleep. I assume they like you say two worlds, I assume it's some sort of like coffin dealio. It's like it's like a pyramid. It's like a big boy pyramid. Big boy pyramid? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um making the reawakening process not go anywhere smoothly. Mm-hmm. As the Silent King would like, especially since he's kind of in a hurry because mm-hmm. bugs, 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 bugs. Right? It's a bug's life. And then, um, of those that have not awoke, of, the, of of those that have awoken, not everyone like wants to work with him mm-hmm. on the account of whole of the whole. Oh, my immortal undying soul is gone now. Deal, mm-hmm. <laughs> which they all agreed to. So it's kind of unfair to pin it on him. Yeah, but whatever, right? Um, but they do still have that one directive of rebuild the Necron Empire, mm-hmm. which. They're all working towards, but they all have different approaches, right? They're redoing the whole feudal thing. N- no, because there was organization in that feudal space. Mm. This is like, it's not a cohesive race anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, Necron on Necron violence happens, mm. right? Um, but the reason I quite like the fact that they're all still pursuing that goal mm-hmm. is it gives them so much personality. Yeah. Because there's so many ways to skin that cat, right? Mm-hmm. Um, some... Just doing the good old fashioned, we'll just conquer the universe. We did it once, we can do it again. Yeah. Like there's some who genuinely like look at the modern races with a very fair analysis of we were here sixty million years before you mm-hmm. and ran this town. Yeah. You're nothing to us. Mm-hmm. Right? There are some that are like, Ooh, the Seven Kings looking weak. We could like reunite the Necrons that way. Yeah, we could just take take care of him. Some then... people are hyper focused on getting their meat bodies back. Mm-hmm. Um the one guy I mentioned earlier, Orkin, the guy who can see the future, mm-hmm. his whole shtick is he's trying to master time travel effectively. Fun. Right? Um some have opted for rampant kleptomania. God, there's so many fun necrons. I do remember God, Trazen. there's so many fun necrons. I do right? remember Trazen. And so that like pr- they're all following that goal of reuniting the Necron Empire or rebuilding it but there's so many fun ways of going about it I love it Mm -hmm. it gives them so much personality so much character so much charm like I love how okay 
side tangent because we're gonna do a full video on the various Necron characters. Mm-hmm. That's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. But like a couple I want to mention some honorable mentions. Orokin. Mm-hmm. Um, he can see the future still. Right. Yeah. But again, it's like it's like a one in ten chance. Well, mm. not one in ten chance, but again, he sees a future. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't like him because he has a very big, big boy, I told you so energy. Because mm-hmm. I told you so. If I had told the entire, if I could see the future and I told the entire human race, if you go through this portal, you're going to turn into robots. And these robots are not going to have souls. So say goodbye to your soul. And they still. Well, a bit more cryptic than that. Unanimously decided to go through the portal. I would be saying the same thing. Well, yeah, but he's, yeah, but again, it's like, it's like, it's, we're here now. Play with the hand we've been dealt, right? And so, a lot of Necrons don't like him because Big Boy told you so energy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like him back because he hates authority because last time he listened to authority, he was dragged in and lost his soul forcibly, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is very fair. Mm -hmm. But again, it's kind of hard to plot and kill somebody who can see the future, Mm -hmm. right? And he's, the ability to see the future is also a very useful trait, right? Mm -hmm. And he's aware of that. Like, if, if they realize he doesn't see the, the future, but a future, mm-hmm. he's kind of boned mm-hmm. because then the the like the invincibility, the air of invincibility he's built up will fall apart. Yeah, right. So occasionally, when he's wrong, he'll just go back in time and fix that, <laughs> which he's aware has consequences. By the way, mm-hmm. and he's felt them personally. But like, it's almost like a petty thing of like, I gotta be. If I say this out loud, it's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. I will make it happen. Mm-hmm. So like, there there have been times where he's like, he's predicted. An ambush, it didn't happen, and then he made it happen. <laughs> he ambushed them himself. No, he just went back in time and like messed with it. Mm-hmm. But again, like all media, time travel has its problems, mm-hmm. right? Um, another Necron I really like is Trazen. His approach to restoring the Necron Empire is we're gonna be here longer than all of these losers, so I'm just gonna take their shit <laughs> and like preserve it. And like he, to be fair, he, this was his gig when he was living. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite things about Trazen is when he went through, he kept like, his back is hunched. Mm-hmm. He's a robot. There's no need for his back to like be hunched. Yeah. But because as a human, he was always hunched over his desk. That's kind of why he mm-hmm. has a hunch now. Yeah. Right. But yeah, so his, his old approach is, dude, I've been here for 60 million years. You've been here for five. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take your capital city and put it in a bottle. And it's gonna be a really cool display in my museum. I and if you try and stop me, you'll join the display. I do like Trazen. Like he has, like the, the amount of stuff he's stolen is weird. Mm-hmm. He has a bell that rings every time Abaddon the Despoiler goes on Black mm-hmm. Crusade. Mm-hmm. He has a living cork somehow, right? <laughs> Him and the Salamanders are constantly fighting over Vulcan stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he's got an entire legion of like Catachin warriors ready. Yeah. Like he just he just takes stuff. And like, you've, like told, a true... you, you've told me, you told me about him like months ago, mm-hmm. and I remember the the thing that I thought of, like the the best analogy that I have is he gives me mad the collector from Guardians of the Galaxy energy, mm. and I love that. Oh no, he Trazen's wonderful. I want there's a long list of items he has, and I want to go over them so desperately. Just bad. inventory Trazen stuff. No, yeah, no, it's because again, he's like a true historian. It's not like he's taking this for glory. He genuinely takes stuff because it's like, oh no, this this needs to be preserved. This needs to be preserved. Like he'll just steal a space marine because he's like, well, I don't have this one yet. Why not? It's like this needs to be preserved. Like mm-hmm. he'll just capture guardsmen sometimes, mm-hmm. right? He like he the amount of things he has by Pokemon balling it effectively mm-hmm. is a bit astounding. Treason steals. A lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I, when we cover all the Necrons, which is going to happen because you guys wanted it, right? They were third place, so mm-hmm. they're coming third, right? Mm-hmm. We got to go over the list of the stuff ne- he's stolen. Yeah. It's it's extensive. Um, there's Namasar Zandrik and Vargard Oberon. Um, the, hold on. You said that way too fast. Run that by me oh, one more on. time. Then there's Nemesaur Zandrik mm-hmm. and vanguard oberon one of those sounds like a cross between a megazord and a dinosaur Mm -hmm. which i mean sometimes they're the same thing Mm -hmm. but you get what i mean and the second one is a warframe yeah but um they're they're a really fun duo because like (sighs) how do i okay to explain why xandric is so funny Mm -hmm. we also have to explain why the orcs were created the Necrons are unfeeling computers. Mm-hmm. So using traditional logic against them in war isn't going to end well because they're just going to do it better. Yeah. Right. It's like it's like trying to beat 
deep blue at chess. You're not going to do it. It, it. Like, from everyone who played against it, it quote, felt like a wall coming at me, mm-hmm. right? So they're very good at traditional warfare. Quarks were designed to do that, to do, like, weird random warfare, basically, mm-hmm. right? So pretty much most good Necron generals hate orcs because mm-hmm. there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah, how do I predict it they're if it's not unpredictable? They're not regimenting. They're just running at me, yeah. like, in different ways every time, yelling, wah! Mm-hmm. Like, ugh! Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it's... Most, a lot of Necrons want orcs gone first, just because they can't fathom it, mm-hmm. right? Xandric can. Like, Xandric frequently just... He's orcs. just like, I, I am I am one sixteenth orc. I know what they're going to do. No, he's just, he's just so much fun, right? And so, he's a really good general, and one of the few who can actually, like, consistently beat orcs, mm-hmm. right? But, he still behaves and acts like he's a person. Mm. <laughs> And he still thinks mm-hmm. that um, he's 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 still a person, mm-hmm. and these aren't fellow uh, people in the university that he's beating, but mm-hmm. it's other Necrons. So he strictly adheres to their Geneva Convention. Mm-hmm. Like he will always go for capture first. Mm-hmm. He will offer retreat. Mm-hmm. He never uses assassins. Mm-hmm. If he captures you, he's actually going to treat you really well. He's going to have dinner with you, which is kind of weird because you're seeing a robot slag food down its throat. That like, pops out basically immediately because. No digestive tract, right? <laughs> like, like he's such a weirdo, and mm-hmm. it kind of mi- miffs all the other Necrons because they're like, "We're robots. Just Stop eating peace. food. Just make peace with it. Just make peace with it, right?" But they can't do anything because he's a genuinely really competent fighter. Mm-hmm. And then his buddy Vanguard Oberon is like a very devout bodyguard mm-hmm. who's like, "I'm here. I'm listen. I'm just here for him." <laughs> And so, like, every time somebody tries to assassinate him, Oberon will end it very quickly. Oh. Like, every time, like, Xandric, like, captures somebody, mm-hmm. they'll mysteriously be found dead <laughs> with wounds consistent with Oberon's weapon. And Xandric, I'm pretty sure Xandric knows, too, because he'll go, hmm, that's weird. Moves on. <laughs> right? And I'm, it's, the jury's out on, because a lot of people say, like, this character was created to kind of commemorate somebody's grandfather who was mm-hmm. going through dementia at the time. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a robot with dementia, right? Yeah. So... That's a possibility. That's kind of sweet. But also, Xandric has looked at the camera and winked. <laughs> like, like, oh, I need to... Give me a second. Okay, so I wasn't able to find my favorite one, but I did find two that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll just describe the third one. I'm sure one of you in the comments will let me know what the full one is, and mm-hmm. we'll cover it next episode. But my first one is um, when Xandric is facing an orc wah, right? Mm-hmm. And he just says, See, Oberon, the Separatists come, attempting to outflank me as they did at the fourth battle. How they calculate that dabbing themselves green and roaring like savages will produce a different outcome, I can't fathom. But it's of no account. Ready, my legion. Another victory will be ours. <laughs> like, he's so great. He speaks like a comic British general. No, I love it. And, and then the, the one that I couldn't find but I love so dearly is um, when Vanguard Oberon's trying to get it through his skull. Like, oh, Jesus, please, we're robots. Please, please, please. Right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, now listen. Now listen. Listen, listen, listen. Even if I did believe for a second that we were robots that got our souls ripped away 60 million years ago force, forcibly by a deal we didn't want to take. And he winked. What joy would it give me to admit to that? Wouldn't it be better for me to just pretend that I was a person still and enjoy this eternal crusade for what it is with my best friend? My favorite part is the end. He winked. Bit. And he, winked. he literally winked. He at literally the winked at the camera. Yeah, that's so, lovely. That is my favorite one. And then like a how you wink at the camera in, in a, a book, book is beyond me. I need to figure out what book that was. Um, but and then my last one that I love from him is. Um, uh, no, said Xandric, resting a hand on um, the armor of Oberon's shoulder. Mm-hmm. I'll always know my Oberon, even if I lose comprehension of all other things. Instead, I wonder if I've lost some of my wits. Maybe I don't see the world for what it truly is, but that'll never ha- matter. For as long as I have you by my side... But, oh, hold on. No, said Xandric, resting a shoulder on the on the armor... Ah! <laughs> Fuck. No, said Xandric, resting a hand on the... Uh, armor of his shoulder i'll mm-hmm. always know my Oberon, even if i lose all comprehension of all other things indeed sometimes i wonder if i've lost some of my wits if maybe i don't see the world for what it truly is but that will never matter so long as i have you by my side you are in many ways the stronger half of me the better half even if you're an oafish stubborn clod 
I love that. Like they, it's just so bro tier. Mm-hmm. They're such bros. I mm-hmm. love it. Like he's actually one of my. They favorite were best characters. buds. No, he's actually one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I mean when I say the Necrons have so much personality. Because mm-hmm. like you'll see everyone else taking this like galaxy wide conquest very very seriously, and like a few Necrons are just having a day of it. Mm-hmm. Nah, to be fair, all the orcs are having a day of it. All the orcs are having a day of it. So I gotta give them credit there. They're they're loving this. More things to fight. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. But um, no, and I, I I love I love his um I love I love Xanderix like uh, the tone of that. He again, he sounds like a comic British general. Oh, they're trying this again, <laughs> smoking a pipe. Hmm, maybe we'll just take it around the back. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it, and it's so great. And everyone's like, oh, Jesus, fine, 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 fine. Like it's oh, it, they've always amused me because there's this guy called the Storm Lord, and he's like the the Pharaon G. I wonder. Where they got that from? I really do wonder. Yeah, of of that dynasty. Uh, I've seen their art. They build obelisks. That you just said they have pyramids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's the pharaoh of that dynasty that Xandric belongs to, right? Mm-hmm. And like he's a super just great general, like a genius by every level. Mm-hmm. Like when he rolls in a green storm cloud with thunder and lightning appears, thunderbolts he, and lightning. He, very very frightening. Me. <laughs> and, and he'll event he'll like bump into orcs, and it's a genuine like. Moment, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like he he will wipe anything else for fun, mm-hmm. but like he bumps into orcs and like he genuinely just. I don't understand <sighs> it. I don't understand it. I he, don't understand. He'll it. win, but he won't be very happy. Like mm-hmm. it frustrates him. Yeah, and that's so much fun to me. Mm-hmm. So no matter how much they hate his shenanigans of like capture the enemy and all that, he's such a good general. They're like, whatever, whatever, <laughs> fine. I don't care. <laughs> right. So the Necrons are wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, currently in 40k, a lot of them are just rebuilding, mm-hmm. right? Like just wakey, wakey. wakey the Sa- wakey. the Sound King's trying to like win people back to his side. Like, hey guys, I had to, right? Mm-hmm. And the Storm Lord is trying to win people to his side by like going, no, you didn't. <laughs> uh, I'm vastly oversimplifying, but basically those are the two major players. Mm-hmm. I never other Necrons kind of like doing their own thing. The I had to and the no, you didn't. And mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Like, like the Storm Lord just doesn't trust him. Mm. And to be fair, the Storm Lord is that guy. Like again. Again, the Silent King has the best Necron body, period. Mm-hmm. He literally floats on the shard of a Catan. Oh. Like, he's that guy, and the Storm Lord woke up, called him a bitch, and left. <laughs> yeah, they literally called him a bitch and just walked. You... And, the Sil- and the Silent King was like, eh. Okay, whatever. Whatever. So, like, that, that shows you how strong the Storm Lord is, right? So, that's yeah. kind of the big things happening. Um, not... Like, the galaxy doesn't recognize how dangerous they really are. Mm-hmm. It's only the Eldar going, eh, eh. We saw this, guys! The, the Eldar are also at their all-time weakest, so they can't mm. really do much about it. Mm-hmm. And nobody else is really focused on the other threat. Everyone else is too busy st- stressing over. So the orcs have met the Tyranids, mm-hmm. and they're locked in a very long battle. And mm-hmm. a lot of people currently are going, whoever wins that mm-hmm. basically wins the galaxy. Yeah. Because, again, Tyranids adapt in combat Mm -hmm. and orcs get stronger from combat oh and so like literally so this is just an endlessly like exponential growth like like a high fleet and an orc wa were basically guided together as like a distraction just to get the pressure off but then like after the fact they're like oh Oh. whoever walks away from that is gonna be such a problem awful and so everyone everyone else's focus is on that right Mm -hmm. the imperium's torn in half so that's a problem too chaos Mm -hmm. is just like Crip walking all over the place. That's a problem too. Like, there's just so many other problems. Nobody's noticing these robot boys like kidnapping people and like rending their flesh. Mm. <laughs> Nobody notices, <laughs> right? Like, people are so busy they genuinely don't notice Trazen and just yoink. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Trazen's literally doing the bit from Doctor Strange where he's just like portaling and stealing books from a library and leaving. Oh no, Trazen's such a, like like the people under his command, right? Mm-hmm. He'll like. He'll, like, run in with, like, controlling one of their bodies. He'll, mm-hmm. like, run in, try and steal something, get killed, go back to his, go drat, and then steal another one and do it again. <laughs> drat. Yeah. <laughs> like, like literally, like, Trazen has lived that repeated trying to steal something before. Mm-hmm. And it's just his goons dying, and he's like, damn it. We'll get him next time. And he just runs in again. Not like, Matthew, I enjoyed that body. Like, like it's just, ah, oh, Trazen's so much fun. A lot Ugh. of the Necrons are so much fun, right? But, um... Now, let's move on. Mm-hmm. 
I today we're not going to have a community centered segment. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I knew the Necrons were going to run a little long, mm-hmm. so a little long in the tooth, just because they have so much history, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but specifically I, 60 million years of it i know um but i did want to cover something that was related and it's another one of my many interests like i said um i told you guys cars tech is a lot of them mm-hmm. and right now i figured it's a perfect time to bring up the robots of today while we talk about the robots, the robots of the of future today. they're waking up oh yeah yeah oh yeah um I, i'm sure i don't need to explain to everyone what's going on right now mm-hmm. but just to play devil's advocate, we're currently pretty much going through an AI revolution. Mm-hmm. It's just a fact. We're hitting the singularity. No, not quite. Mm. It's overhyped. You have to understand, these are not intelligent yet. Mm-hmm. That's like saying, okay, you're... Re- We've brought up Deep Blue like five times, but it's such a good example. Mm-hmm. You're like freaking out when you saw Deep Blue beat Gary Kasparov. I'm which not freaking is, out. No, which is fair. It's it's very... a lot. No, a lot of people are freaking out. They're like, oh my God, it's sentient and sentient. No. Mm-hmm. They're just very good at certain tasks. Now, to be fair, mm-hmm. to play a devil's advocate, they are very good at the tasks. Everyone was like, a robot will never take these. Yeah. Like, it has been shattering to see what it's done to the art community. No, the thing that is the thing that is surprising me about, like, AI is the fact that, like, ChatGPT4 just learned how to code. No, uh, GPT-3 knew. Is it GPT-3 that knew how to code? Again, again, that's a very specific task. Well, no, 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 no. But here's the thing. AI is a thing made of code. And it's being taught how to code. And now it's teaching people how to code. Yeah, it's taught me. Like, there's some things I've accomplished with GPT that I couldn't on my own. So, like, been a very good teacher, actually. So, like, the thing that I, I don't want to use fear, because it's not really a fear thing. It's <laughs> just like a, huh, that's happening. Um... It's been given the tools to improve itself. To be fair, there have been machines that can self-replicate for a bit now. Yeah, but they haven't been smart. It's not smart. It's the th- Okay, here's the thing GPT is very good at. It's very good at taking large swaths of data and summarizing it. Like, mm-hmm. that's really what it does. It's not adaptive mm-hmm. yet. GPT-4 is real close. But it just takes huge... No, that's the, that's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. It's like every day I see new headlines of like... The developers of ChatGPT4 didn't know it was going to do this. <laughs> Those are mostly clickbait hype. I know they're mostly clickbait hype, but the fact that we're getting to that level of clickbait hype doesn't mean we're there, but we're on the cusp. No, this, again, again, it's like, it's, there's so much misinformation on it right now. Mm. Right? It's like when people are freaking out and saying, Siri is genius, and it's like, no, it's just a search no, engine that can hear my voice. That a lot of people are acting like AI is smart. Mm-hmm. Which it is very good at tasks, mm-hmm. and it's it has the potential to be. But right now, in its current state, it's mm-hmm. not as earth rending as we think it's going to be. Yeah, and no, you uh, misunderstand the, the thing, my point. No, of no view. I understand. No, but it's a clickbait. I know it's not you. I'm addressing the clickbait, mm-hmm. right? And what most of people's fears are. Mm-hmm. What I don't see enough people discussing is the gulf of income inequality this is going to cause. Yeah. Because everyone's freaking out like, oh God, it's going to take your job. No, you don't understand. It's going to make the rich 10 times richer. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 this is an iPhone moment, basically. Like Bill Gates recently said, this is an iPhone moment for AI. And I dare I say, I would actually go further and say, this is an iPhone moment. This is a World Wide Web happening again. Yeah. There are going to be many, the next billionaires are going to be minted in this space. Mm-hmm. They're already billionaires if they're clever about it. Will the gap between the haves and the have-nots will be wider than ever? Yeah, wider than ever. Mm -hmm. And I found this, which was super weird. Mm. It caused a very weird sense of dread, almost not dread. That's not the right word, but um, it 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 got emotions in me because um, as a kid, Mm -hmm. I used to have always been really scientifically minded, right? Mm -hmm. Um, as a kid, I used to really look up to like Stephen Hawking. Mm-hmm. Right, like he was, he was, he actually was a huge inspiration to me at the time, and I, and still is, by the way. Right, mm-hmm. the man is a luminary, mm-hmm. right, um, and made me want to be an astrophysicist for a bit. Mm-hmm. And then I googled the median pay, and I'm like, oh, oh, I can't put food on the table. That's with that. real, real sad, yeah. Which is a shame. I think they should be paid so much more. I, I think NASA should get more funding. That's neither here nor there, mm-hmm. right? Um, but one of the last. Thing in his final years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things he did was like an ask me anything on Reddit, mm-hmm. and I randomly stumbled across this, right? Where somebody asked him about how he feels about AI technology at the time, right? Mm-hmm. And he described it as 
he was he said he was optimistic about it, right? Mm-hmm. But we need to treat it carefully, almost like nuclear energy, where mm-hmm. it could either be used to level cities or be used to take us to places we've never been before, right? Mm-hmm. The main thing he, he brought up was the thing I brought up, where it's like, if we do not seriously prepare for AI, mm-hmm. which we haven't, Mm-mm. and we do not seriously adapt to its coming, which we haven't, mm-hmm. it's going to make the rich richer mm-hmm. and the poor poorer. Mm-hmm. The gulf is going to get so wide, it's unfunny. Yeah. And... Seeing that really summarized exactly how I feel about the AI revolution happening right now. A lot of people are talking about, oh, GPT killed artists. Oh, GPT wrote an essay. No. What we're seeing is weaknesses in our own society that we have not dealt with. Mm -hmm. And we already have so many guys just feeling dejected. I know I have felt dejected. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, we have this system before us, Mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, you, you can't, because there's a ton of people around our age who want to have kids, right? Mm-hmm. Who want to like build a future, get a car, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. And you can't participate in that system. No. You already can't. And that's without machines automating a ton of jobs. Yeah. Right? This is only going to make things worse in new and exciting ways. Mm-hmm. And the, I'm not an AI doomer. I actually quite like the technology. No, absolutely same. It's, it's, I, I used to be a bit of an AI doomer because I was like, mm-hmm. I used to be uh, the... the um, the base level sci-fi nerd where I saw AI and I'm like, that's going to destroy us. That's going to terminate us. Mm-hmm. No. no, no, no. I don't think that anymore. Mm-hmm. If that was going to happen, it probably would have already mm-hmm. like the base level intelligence mm-hmm. we have probably would have gone kill humans now. Not intelligence. Yeah. We have to, it's not intelligent mm. yet. You got to throw some, no, yet. it's no, not no. intelligent. It's good at tasks and it's broadening. You misunderstand you, what I mean by that. Uh, we're almost there. We're close enough that it's like not scary, but like again, we're on the cusp. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the thing I don't see enough people covering is the kind of gulf this is going to cause, right? Mm-hmm. But thankfully, um, I've been seeing some really positive things. Like mm. for example, um, uh, there's this thing that Stanford just released called Al- Alpaca Seven B, mm-hmm. and it's kind of built on something that I'll spare you technical jargon. Meta unveiled their own version of like um, of a large language model, mm-hmm. right? And uh, it's called Llama. Mm-hmm. So this is Alpaca. It's kind of built off of that. We don't need to cover how it works. This mm-hmm. is the most important thing about it. You can train your own language model at home mm-hmm. in five hours or less, mm-hmm. allegedly. So that's going to democratize a lot of AI. I, fig- I figure it would depend a lot on the computing power that you have. They ran it on a 3080. No, 4080. Yeah. Does that exist? I believe it does. I've not kept up with computer hardware. I believe in a while. no. We, we are we are we up to the forties now? Mm-hmm. Are we in and the forties? Ca- we can't be. God, I remember when I built my computer. Yeah, forty eighty. Yeah, oh, it, it 40, ran. 80? Yeah, because I remember seeing the articles. It ran on a forty eighty, and it was able mm-hmm. to code it in five hours. Now, to be fair, that's a very expensive rig. Yeah, but that's still cool that it's even feasible. I have a twenty eighty now. I I would need to look up the, the, the differences in performance between a 2080 and a 4080 computationally and graphically. I figure graphically there's probably not too much of a difference, but computationally. Yeah. Yeah. NVIDIA is caked mm-hmm. right now. Between self-driving cars, the AI revolution, mm-hmm. NVIDIA is a great pick. It's all running on NVIDIA. <laughs> it's wonderful. They're doing great. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's so cool. You could have your own lightweight version of ChatGPT soon, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Um, it's also... Really amused me, frankly, because I was in the camp of, yeah, AI is going to take over the monotonous work first, which it did. Mm -hmm. It did. Um, But as a society, we didn't notice that um, it already had. And we were very shocked when it came for the creative stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's kind of wild how in the last year, basically, AI Mm -hmm. has gotten very good at art to the point where it's... The the tell used to be hands, Mm -hmm. right? It's Um, getting closer. I've seen some... No, it does hands. I... No, it does. There's some oddities still. I saw a picture recently of like it was the dumbest. It was the dumbest thing. It was like it was like Joe Biden playing a, a video game. <laughs> it's like Joe Biden playing on a PS4, mm-hmm. and like his fingers were right, like oh, they no. were around the controller properly. Oh, I saw f- pictures from like French protests that looked very realistic, mm-hmm. and like I tried to like to look at the fingers, and I was like, oh no, that's just real. They don't have ten. No, 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 no. They had the right amount of fingers. Yeah. I thought it was real for a moment. There was then... like one. There was like one picture I saw recently. Like it was generated recently, where they mm-hmm. had three. 
Mm -hmm. But like, no, um, it's, it's getting closer. It's, it's mastered hands. I can confidently say mm -hmm. like, it's gotten much better because I was fooled a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's kind of scary because living in an era where voices can be faked. Now pictures can be faked, which, mm -hmm. oh God. And then recently video is going to be the, no video. No, not is it's not out yet, but there's a couple of systems where you can just type in and a video will be generated mm -hmm. a short video. Mm -hmm. So even videos will soon be generated and it's none of us are ready. Yeah. <laughs> none of us are ready. Yeah. Right. Um, I feel though I, 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 the people I feel the worst for is like the art community mm -hmm. because I feel like it's going to hammer them. Mm -hmm. um, the art community. And then I think honestly, gigs like this are probably going to go next. Yeah. I'll be honest. It's kind of scary how it's coming from like the artsy, fun, creative stuff first. Yeah. Because I'll be honest. It's like, this is all well and good. We're like, great. This is fun. And we thank you guys for supporting us a lot. Mm -hmm. But if I was a company, right, it's like, why would I invest in a, in a influencer whom I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Or I could just build an AI influencer that's perfect. That fits my brand perfectly and engages yeah. perfectly, right? Yeah. So it's like I content. Mean, look, at, look at Samsung's, um, mm -hmm. I can't remember what she's called, but they've got their own like avatar character. Mm -hmm. I, I, the only reason I remember her is because people on Twitter had the hots for her a couple months ago. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but yeah. 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 Build no, her in, build an AI brain into her. It's, and, it's terrifying. It's one of the main reasons I actually started this because I've always had this deep, deep feeling, this deep, uh, almost feeling unsettled mm -hmm. about the fact that it's like, it feels like if you can't make it now mm -hmm. and help as many people as you can make it, mm -hmm. then that would, the door, it feels like the door shutting in our faces. Yeah. It feels like, like there's literally somebody shutting the door in our faces. And so that's kind of why I started all this mm -hmm. so that I can get there and drag as many people with me mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Right. Because it's like, it, it, we're it, getting, it seems if we're not already there. We're getting very close to the cyberpunk. dystopia. It, it, it seems like, Oh, you're being alarmist. Like, Oh, we won't have AI influencers. We will. We will. Yeah. Soon. It's going to be generative wanks for God's sake. Generative. Yeah. 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 Like, why would I, Busy, why would I busy myself trying to find an artist, commissioning them to make mm -hmm. the perfect thing, or like mm -hmm. searching for hours and hours and hours on end for like the perfect thing when I could just generate whatever I want? Yeah. Like, let's say in the future, which is this is possible by the end of the year. I've I seen my I've, own model of mm -hmm. GPT trained at not G, like my own model at home mm -hmm. trained right on whatever the hell I want. I could just immediately without and kids could get access P to that. People are already trying it. If you don't know, a lot of Mid Journey is run through. A, a discord server for some reason i know i'm the one who got us in there for some reason mm -hmm. for some reason um you say for some reason it's a very effective system i mean yeah but i've played with dolly i've played with mid journey I, anyway I like mid journey more anyway so any generation through mid journey is pretty public in that discord because it just posts it mm -hmm. into their mm -hmm. general chat there's some, there's some there's some wild stuff and like you see there's some wild stuff you, you see you see people generating uh, conventionally attractive women in uh, compromising poses with with dog heads. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see what the, 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 the prompters are going with here, and it scares me a little bit. Again, it's like... It's totally but it's sense. like... It, you say it's far away now. It's... No, it's right there. It's... I know we're on mm -hmm. the coast. Yeah, no, no. We're like right on the cliff, it feels like. We're right, right there. Like in five years, it's probably going to be generative wanking. Mm -hmm. I, I feel confident putting that on the internet. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> like like that's just and it's it's gonna change a lot and nobody's ready for it nobody's really ready for it mm -hmm. yet so i mean i suppose the best you can do is what i'm gonna try and do which is i'm gonna try and like try and stay abreast with all the stuff happening mm -hmm. right and try and update you guys on all the stuff happening um because i feel like it's important and if i can maybe get an idea in someone's head of like oh yeah i could do this and mm -hmm. it helps them out no that that that's that's that's, that's the goal right there